Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is a quiz review for Psychology 1100 Lifespan Development. In it, we're looking at Chapter 2, which is Beginnings, and this is the second online quiz. The first question on this quiz is, how can a genetic code be altered? And the choices that you have on this quiz are A, through mitosis, B, through meiosis, C, through mutation, or D, through reduction division. Well, the answer in this case, um, mitosis and meiosis simply have to do with uh, how cell division, and um, the answer here is mutation. The idea is that a genetic code is inherited from the parents, but a mutation makes it so a person can have something uh, in their genes that comes from neither their father nor their mother, and so the third element there is mutation or random alteration. Okay, number two, which of the following is used sparingly as it carries the greatest risk of miscarriage? The choices here are CVS, which hopefully you know stands for chorionic villus sampling. The B is ultrasound, C is amniocentesis, and D is early amniocentesis. Well, these are all uh, four different ways of checking on the uh, an embryo or a fetus as it's developing to uh, see that it's healthier to check for particular uh, problems, and the one that carries the greatest risk of miscarriage. Now, it's not like it's it's not like it's over fifty percent of the people who get a miscarriage, but it has the has a higher risk than the others is CVS, the chorionic villus sampling, because it's done earliest, and also it involves getting not just a sample of amniotic fluid, which is what you do in amniocentesis, but it involves getting a little piece of the uh, tissue. Uh, it's also done very early. It's most often associated with checking for Down syndrome, though it actually can be used to check for a couple hundred other disorders early on. But uh, CVS, you don't want to do it unless you need to. Okay, number three. Why does only one sperm enter the ova? A, a chemical is released to prevent others from entering. B, more than one sperm enter the ova, but do not fertilize the egg. By the way, I gotta say, ova is plural. Um, they should be saying ovum, um, anyhow. But uh, more than one sperm enter the ova, but do not fertilize the egg. The ova has room for one sperm. Or D, the chemical used to attract sperm ceases once one sperm enters the ova. All right, well, if you remember a little bit about your biology or human sexuality, you might remember that A is the correct answer. A chemical is released by the egg to prevent other sperm from entering. I like this one about that there's, you know, C, there's no more room because uh, human ova are the largest cells that we have and sperm are just about the smallest. And, and it's like, you know, there's a huge size difference. There's plenty of room, but there's a chemical that stops the uh, reentry. Okay, number four. How long is a normal gestation period? So that means, you know, being pregnant. And the choices are 260 days or 270 or 280 or 290 days. Well, you may recall that um, it's a little easier to think about this in terms of weeks. 40 weeks is normal. And 40 weeks, so 40 times 7, is going to give you 280 days. And that's the normal gestation period. Although, as we saw previously, coming two weeks early um, is still within the normal realm. It's not considered premature. Okay, next one. Which of the following forms the digestive and respiratory systems in the embryonic stage? So embryo, uh, that's very early on before it becomes a fetus. And the digestive and respiratory systems, you get formed by the ectoderm, the neural tube, the endoderm, or the mesoderm. Well, in this case, you remember we had a similar question that talked about the reproductive system, and that was the mesoderm. In this case, the digestive and respiratory systems are formed from the endoderm. Again, derm meaning skin, and you throw sort of different layers. And um, anyhow, the endoderm is for the digestive and respiratory. Number six. Which of the following is defined as any environmental agent that can harm the embryo or fetus? The choices are A, syphilis, B, teratogen, C, rubella, or D, deficiency. And it's kind of a silly question because, you know, syphilis is a disease, but it's sexually transmitted. Uh, rubella is a bad disease, whooping cough, you don't want that. Uh, deficiency is a very generic term, which leaves us as B, teratogen, uh, or Greek for the origin of a monster, monster origin. Um, 
but that's just a generic category term for anything that can cause um, a harm to the embryo or fetus. Number seven, which of the following refers to a condition that is present at birth and results from genetic or chromosomal abnormalities? Okay, so it's there from the beginning. And the choices are A, congenital, B, phenotypical, C, teratogenic, or D, dysfunctional. Well, um, you know, dysfunctional just means something that's bad, but we talk about like dysfunctional families. Uh, teratogenic means something that causes uh, deformities or harm, um, but that's environmental. Um, a phenotype means uh, as opposed to your genotype, which is your, your genetic makeup, the phenotype says, what do you actually look like? And the one we're looking for here is congenital. So it means con is with, and then the genes. So con genes, uh, with the genes. So it's something that comes that way. All right, number eight. What is the likelihood that a child born in China will die during the first year as, com as compared to a child born in Italy. Now, this requires, you know, something about the child mortality rates or the probability of death during the first year for children in each of these areas. And your choices are that a child in uh, China has a mortality rate that is four times more likely than that one in Italy or four times less likely or six times more likely or six times less likely. Okay. Again, this isn't telling you what the absolute rates are. It's just saying that one is higher than the other. And in this case, the answer is six times more likely that a child born in China has, an, has a mortality rate that is six times higher than that which is in, uh, in Italy. Although I'd, I'd be willing to bet that with changes going on in China, that that is going to um, probably out of date by now and will be changing dramatically, I assume. All right, number nine. Which country is the safest place to give birth? Now, that, of course, means what do you mean by safest? Uh, but we're talking really about the lowest child mortality rate. Um, the choices are A, the United States, B, England, C, Ireland, or D, Spain. All right. Well, from these ones, the choice uh, that has the, of these ones, the one with the lowest child mortality rate, interestingly, is Ireland. Um, lower than the U.S., we actually have a number of health problems here, but I often think that's because of the quality of health care, um, I can talk more about that, just that we're able to keep sick people alive more, so we have more sickness, even though it actually is because of a good thing. But um, Ireland has the lowest child mortality rate of these four countries. Okay, last question. Okay, this one gets a little technical. According to Hoover, 2005, Johnson et al., 2004, McCray et al., 2000, Holy Moses, I can't imagine that you would have memorized those, but it's an open book test. Which of the following is true? A, MZ or monozygotic twins resemble one another more strongly than DZ or dizygotic twins in intelligence and personality traits. B, MZ twins resemble one another less strongly than DZ twins in intelligence and personality traits. C, DZ twins are more likely to share psychological disorders than MZ twins, or D, DZ twins are more likely to be similar in height. And again, you have to remember that DZ and MZ, DZ means dizygotic, or two different eggs that happen to get fertilized at the same time. Um, so again, those kids are no more related than any other siblings. Um, whereas MZ means monozygotic, which means a single fertilized egg um, split into two, and so you have identical genes in the two. Well, you know, with that in mind, considering that monozygotic twins have identical genes, then it's not too surprising that A is the answer, that uh, monozygotic twins or identical twins resemble one another more strongly than DZ, or dizygotic, or fraternal twins in intelligence and personality traits. And with that, we've reached the end of this second quiz for Chapter 2, Beginnings in Lifespan Development. Thanks for being here.